decided photography is one of the weirdest art forms around. Because photography, you know, taking pictures is art. In the same way as painting or drawing or making music or acting, they're all forms of art. But the public perception of photography is just weird. I mean, think about it. I can pick up a pencil and I can draw a doodle, but I wouldn't perceive myself as being a professional artist. I mean, I've actually owned a guitar for the best part of about 10 years now, but I've never spent any time really trying to learn how to play it. I strum the odd little bits and pieces, but I sure as hell wouldn't go on stage and perform in front of people because I know I don't have the talent to do that. Now, I know the guitar that I have isn't a particularly good one, but I know that I'm the limiting factor with that. The reason that I don't sound good isn't the guitar, it's me. And I know that going to a music shop and spending £2,000 on a really top flight guitar isn't going to make me sound any better. Sure, the racket that I make might sound slightly crisper, but it's still going to be a racket. When I'm listening to music, I'm not sat there thinking, hmm, this song sounds really good. They must have had some really good instruments for making this. When I look at a painting or a picture that somebody's drawn, I don't think, wow, they must have had some really expensive brushes. You think, these guys are really talented. But show somebody a really good photo and their immediate response is, hmm, that must have been a really good camera. And this causes a problem for photographers, both when trying to buy equipment and trying to do business. Because I've seen quite a few people comment on my videos saying that they wouldn't pick a particular camera because it doesn't look professional. I even had it myself at a wedding when I took my camera out of my bag and somebody said, hmm, I thought it'd be bigger. At least I hope they were talking about my camera. Professional looking cameras means precisely squat if you don't know how to use them. In exactly the same way as I'm an okay driver, you put me in a racing car against racing drivers, they'll kick my ass. If you put me in a professional racing car against professional racing drivers, but not in a professional racing car, odds are they're still going to get better results than I can because they know how to get the most out of the equipment they've used. While I've got the potential in the equipment, I don't have the potential in me. And it's exactly the same story with cameras. In any system, there is always a bottleneck, the one thing that is running at its absolute maximum potential and holding the rest of the system back. And if you want to make that system better, if you want to increase the performance you're getting from that system, you need to improve the bottleneck. If you don't, anything else is pointless. You can upgrade every other single component in that system, but if the bottleneck's still that same size, you're not going to increase your performance. And with a camera, the camera, the lens, and all the other equipment, you as a photographer are part of that system. And if your skill is the bottleneck of your camera, then getting a better camera isn't actually going to improve the look of your pictures at all. I always maintain a better camera does not make you a better photographer. A better camera will only allow good photographers to take potentially better images. And realistically, this notion of I need my camera to look professional is actually complete crap because clients don't book you based off the camera you're using. They book you based off the images that they've seen you produce. And at that point, they don't actually know what camera you're using. They'll only find out what camera you're using when you turn up to do the shoot and they see it for the first time. And at that point, they're not gonna go, hmm, your camera doesn't look professional, go away. They're still gonna let you take the photos. And then as long as the photos that you present to them at the end are of the same professional quality as the photos that they booked you on, they're gonna be happy. I've never seen a customer review that said along the lines of, yes, we like this photographer for the images that they produced. The, fa the results they gave us were absolutely fantastic, but his camera didn't look professional enough.
And if you think about it, your camera is actually the least important piece of equipment when it comes to taking a picture. Yes, you obviously need to have a camera. Because a good quality camera body is only any use if you've got good quality lenses to go with it. And you will get better results from good lenses on a cheap body than cheap lenses on a good body. But ahead of that, you've got the composition of your image. So things like leading lines and vanishing points and the rule of thirds and odd numbers of people will all help produce a more powerful looking photograph. So using a cheap camera with good composition is going to produce better results than using a really good camera and having crap composition. And ahead of that, you've got lighting because lighting can not only make or break an image, it completely sets the tone of your image. You think about it, just by changing the lighting, you can completely change the feel of a scene. You remember when you were a kid, or maybe you still do, I don't know. You get a torch and you turn all the lights off and you stick it under your face and you get that really spooky looking feel, don't you? And yet take that same torch and put it up over your head and you get a far more angelic feel. You need to know how to recognize and be able to play with the light that you have available to you in order to get the best results. And actually the most important thing to learn about photography is to not see what's in front of you, it's to see the potential of what's in front of you. It's to not just look at a landscape and think, hmm, that looks nice, or no, that doesn't. It's to be seeing beyond that and thinking, how is it going to look if I photograph it like this or like that? Because a camera can see things beyond what our eye can see. Our eye sees everything frame by frame in, snap, in a continuous snapshot like a video. But with cameras, you've got fast shutter speeds to freeze a moment in time that maybe our eye can't actually detect. You can use really long exposures and produce really blurred landscapes that your eye can't actually see. You can use a really shallow depth of field to isolate the subject, but then how's your background gonna look if it goes all blurred? Is it gonna look nice? Is it gonna look cluttered? That's stuff that you don't just pick up overnight. Sure, you can learn the basic principles by watching videos, but you only really learn to recognize when to use different techniques by practicing. I mean, I love playing around with long exposures and I have done for years, but what I've learned is that different environments and different situations produce different looking results with long exposures. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, the image that I posted, for example, was a sole rock on a golden sandy beach with clear blue skies. You look at that picture and it looks like some jet set location where you'd be lounging around in shorts and t-shirt. Now, that was actually shot in Ireland in about four degrees worth of temperature with gales of 30 mile an hour kicking sand up all over the place. I'm there in walking boots, jeans, and two coats, just trying to keep warm. But I knew that that finished picture was gonna look nothing like it actually looked with my eye, because using like a five minute long exposure, the waves were gonna just blur out into nothing. The sand wasn't gonna look dry, it was going to look the, like the wet sand, the more golden look. And I knew that the clouds would blur out and I'd see the blue sky behind it. If I was only looking at that scene at face value, I wouldn't have took the picture because it looked shite. And all of that comes about from practice, not by having better equipment, just by knowing how to use the equipment that you've actually got. In exactly the same way that musicians and artists have spent years honing their craft and learning their skills, and if you gave those same tools to a clueless idiot like me, I'd never be able to produce those results, but I know I wouldn't be able to produce those results without spending years of practice. And photography is no different. That's not to say don't take up photography or you'll be crap at photography. That's to say that the most powerful tool in your arsenal as a photographer is you, the photographer. Having the eye to recognize what's going to make a good photo, having the knowledge of how to compose the image and what is going to help draw the person into the picture. Having tools like filters and lighting equipment that's gonna help you manipulate the light to really emphasize the look that you're going for. All of that comes before 
getting a really good camera. If you can't maximize the camera that you've got now, a better camera is going to make no difference at all. And if you are thinking of sinking £2,000 on a really expensive camera without actually knowing how to use it and you're still using your camera in auto, then you are wasting your money. You would be far better off spending that £2,000 on some useful accessories to go with the camera you've already got, a book on how to maximize the potential of the camera that you've got, and then jet off to some faraway location and go and take some amazing pictures. Well, that's it.